I'm Chef Gail Sokol and welcome to my kitchen. Today we're making strawberry rhubarb compote and it's so good. It is rhubarb season. Spring to early summer, rhubarb starts coming out and it's related to the buckwheat plant, believe it or not. And as long as you don't eat the leaves, you can enjoy rhubarb during those four or five months and you can even buy it frozen as well. So the compote is super, super easy, but before we get started, I need you to click that notification button. You know the one I'm talking about. I want you to become a subscriber. I don't want you to miss any of my tips or videos. I love having you here in my kitchen and I love teaching you and I love hearing from you. It's wonderful. It's a privilege and a pleasure. Okay, strawberry rhubarb compote, super easy on a cooktop or as you can see, I have my hot plate. So I'm gonna get this going. And what I'm doing is I'm going to take uh, two and three quarter cups of sliced rhubarb. I've just washed it and sliced it. Just make sure there's no, there's no leaves on it. The leaves can make you very sick. Um, one tablespoon of fresh lemon juice. One tablespoon of, it can be any type of orange juice or it could, you, you could use pineapple juice, cranberry juice, any type of juice you want. And I have half a cup of granulated sugar. I'm gonna put that in there. And we're gonna bring it to a boil. And we are going to, you can see how that looks. The sugar coats the rhubarb. And this probably is the longest that it's gonna to take to cook the rhubarb down. So I always cook the rhubarb first because it's a little bit tougher uh, and it takes just a little while longer to cook. And you'll see that the rhubarb has some liquid in it but not as much as our strawberries. So I have two cups of sliced strawberries in maybe half, a, half an inch size cubes. And the rhubarb I basically just made into uh, I just sliced it. If you want them smaller, but I like chunks in my compote because you can serve this over a cake, a sponge cake. You can serve this on ice cream. You can serve it on a cheesecake and you might even see a cheesecake or so coming up in the next couple of weeks. I got some real fun stuff for you. Um, so you can see it's beginning to boil. We want to make this um, nice and tender before we add our strawberries. The rhubarb is the hardest. These are rhubarbs. Rhubarb, rhubarb. See without the leaves, the leaves have been cut off. Don't eat the leaves. And these are very, very tart, like mwah, tart. You do not want to eat them raw because they won't taste very good. So make sure that you slice your rhubarb. And another favorite way that I like to cook my rhubarb is in the oven. I actually slice it, put it on a sheet pan, either on parchment, put it in the oven, maybe at 375, 400, and it actually softens really, really nicely as well. So you could skip this, this part and just add it to your sugar and your citrus juices, and it would be beautiful. Now you can see my sugar is beginning to melt down, my rhubarb, it's beginning to pull out some water from my rhubarb. Um, through osmosis, right? There's a lot of science in cooking and baking, um, and even cooktop baking, um, baking, quote unquote, because water's gonna go to, uh, from a higher concentration of itself to a lower concentration. So what wasn't even saucy is now saucy right now. It's got a nice sauce to it, and it's gonna take about three minutes to get this nice and tender. Do not add your strawberries until the rhubarb gets nice and tender. And how do you know if it's tender? You can try it, or you can cut on the side of the saucepan, cut it with uh, your spoon, your slotted spoon or whatever spoon you're using. Now, I also have a tablespoon of cornstarch because I like a thicker compote. I like something that is gonna be sort of, you know, scoopable and spoonable. If you like it a little thinner, don't add the cornstarch. If you don't, it's gonna give off a lot of water, so I got a lot of water here, as you can see. So I want that to boil off. The cornstarch is there to thicken it up, um, and we're going to just get this nice and hot. 
and nice and tender. So I am going to wait for this to get tender. It's almost there. When I worked in a restaurant, I actually asked the, uh, the purveyor that used to supply the restaurant to get me some sliced rhubarb in the winter. Oh my gosh, right? <laughs> That's blasphemy. But I did, I used to make great rhubarb desserts. And if you haven't checked out uh, my website with my list of videos and my recipes, I do a fabulous strawberry rhubarb crumble that is to die for, absolutely delicious. All right, so now we're boiling. So you wanna bring this to a boil for, like I said, three minutes or so. Use your discretion. See how soft you like your rhubarb, and it should be sweet enough now because we have that balance of sugar, the tartness from the rhubarb, and the citrus juices. Okay, so now we're really we're really cooking with gas now. Actually, we're cooking with induction, so we're really not cooking with gas. So it's really, really boiling. You can see it's really, really boiling now. So I'm going to check a piece. And if it's not completely tender, we're going to give it another, oh, it's almost there, almost there. So what I do now is I would add my cornstarch and my strawberries and then mix that up really well. One thing about cornstarch, when you add cornstarch, whatever you're adding it to must come to a boil in order to get its full thickening power. So make sure whatever you're cooking comes to a boil for about a minute or so, 30 seconds a minute. All right, I think I'm there. So I'm gonna add my strawberries first because I want them to mix in with the cornstarch. And then I'm gonna add my cornstarch, okay? So make sure you immediately stir that up so there's no lumps or bumps. See, I'm stirring it up and give it, give it a minute or so to get nice and thick and let everyone get friendly. Strawberry meat, meat rhubarb. <laughs> and you know what this is really great on? If you wanna make a batch of this for your kids, it's great um, on like a yogurt parfait. It's great for breakfast or lunch. My kids love this. And um, when my daughter found out that I was gonna be making this, it was like, what? What? You're making strawberry rhubarb compote? Um, so she just goes nuts over this. This is thickening beautifully. And then what I'm going to do is just give it another 30 seconds and we're going to pour it into my bowl. This is a clean bowl. I just stuck my sugar bowl in there. Um, and I'm just going to pour it right out. This is it. Look at this, folks. It's beautiful. Look at that. Look at that beautifulness. All right, here I go. Oh, boy. I'm going to pour it into my bowl, and it is, you can see, it's nice and thick. It will even thicken more as it cools, so you want to let this get to room temperature before you refrigerate it, and this is your beautiful strawberry rhubarb compote. I hope you make this for the summer. I hope you put it on your desserts and your cakes and your ice cream. And I hope you make yogurt parfaits with it. And more importantly, I want you to become a subscriber. Till next time.